Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to solve this physics questions. Okay, so basically the questions read, a car enters a stretch of road that is 100 meters long, traveling at a constant velocity of 16 meters per second. After some distance traveled, the car brakes with a constant acceleration of 3.2 meters per second square and stop at the end of the stretch of road. Okay, so you can probably just read the questions by yourself and probably try to chew on that. <laughs> so I will sh um, show you the steps, okay? Okay, so um, so this, just treat this thing like normally when we do with um, one object and one acceleration, it's much better. But here we have like two accelerations, right? So it's kind of, it does seem a bit more complicated, but I'll walk you through the steps, okay? So first, um, so like I say, this one has two accelerations, so you make two tables. So one table will for the first acceleration, and the other table will for the, um will be for the second acceleration. Okay, so first this part right here. Um, it says, so right here, the car starts right here, right? That's when um, the velocity is equal to sixteen meter per seconds, and right here is where it kind of ends. It's not end; it's still driving, but right here is when it begins to have an an accelerations right so but look the it, um, final velocity and initial velocity is the same that means the acceleration is zero right there is no accelerations that means the car did not speed up or did not slow down it's the same throughout so that means um so for the first table accelerations go to zero okay let before doing that let's do this thing first it's just a sign. Okay, so just write um, the variable that you want to know, which is times. Um, oh, wait. Times, velocity, and distance. I'll call it S, okay? And that do that for all of it. Okay, so this first box right here, I'm going to make it initial. And this second box right here, I'll make it final. Same thing for this one. Okay. So, personally, I like my teacher showed us two methods. One is to solve it using like um the graph, like in a like what is it called? Um solving it graphically. And the other one is using um, using um, our formulas. Okay, so let's deal with the first box. Okay, so the first box, do we have a an um do we have initial times? Okay, we can just assign a time which is zero. So do we have a final times? Nope, we don't have a final time, right? It doesn't. Overall, it doesn't tell us the time anywhere. It just says that the thing is the whole entire path is 100 meters, but it doesn't mention the times. So we'll just assign the times for it. So we'll call this part right here. That's when the um that's when the acceleration begins. We'll call this time t, and um then when the car stop, that's like the final velocity. But we'll talk about that later. We'll call it the big T, okay? So, but for this first part of acceleration right here, our initial velocity, it, initial time is zero, and the final time is T right here. Okay. Um, let me delete this thing. Okay. All right. So... What is our initial velocity? So remember how this 
remember this it is um the acceleration is zero so the velocity is constant so we'll make um initial velocity and final velocity okay and how about our positions we have no clue but we can always assign the origins so we'll call this zero and you say right here we are given like the thing so this whole entire path right here is just x so that is where the final positions is so we'll call it x okay so i will um try to solve for these variables in here actually let me make this red so it stands out more okay okay so so our variable for the first acceleration is time and final positions okay so we well, can we can use these equations honestly we i have like a list of five equations equations in total that you can use i will give you that list later but here is um the equation that i used so we we know what the change in velocity is right and um the equation is like this right okay so change in velocity time equals to the acceleration times delta t so we know the change in velocity wait 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 okay actually i don't want to use this equations because see our uh, acceleration is con is zero that means our velocity is also constant so you don't want to get zero for everything it's pointless you're not going to solve it for anything oh so i'll use this equations then I'm just, I'm going to plug in, try out multiple equations. Okay. Okay, for this, this equation is beneficial if you don't have an acceleration. So I'll try this e equations. So we don't have delta S. Actually, the, oh, the, oh, the, <laughs> sorry about that. Delta S is this. I just circled that. So that would be final positions minus zero so right here right here right and then one half our velocity is just 16 and delta t is right here right so that will be t minus zero i'll clean that up a little bit equal that's just 16 and t okay that is our first equations Okay, now we're gonna, so that literally covers all of our unknowns right here, right? T and X, times and um, positions. So we can leave it as that. Now we're gonna move to the second box, the second and accelerations. Okay, so, okay, well, so what is our initial time initial? We have no clue, but we know it stops, it begins here, right? Let me use this out um, using pink, okay? Begins here and ends here, okay? So we'll make that t, um, t, and then final time is equal to t, okay? How about our initial and final velocity? So initial velocity, mm, okay, initial velocity right here and final velocity right here, right? So Initial is 16 meter per second and final velocity is 0 meter per second. And how about our positions? Again, we have, we don't know. So we know, so it kind of ends right here. See, it ends right here, right? Which is X and it begins here. Sorry, it begins here. And then it ends here, which is 100 minus x okay so um wait sorry sorry yeah sorry about that no yeah i'm sorry um so this whole we want to find the the total displacement of this path right there right but we know the whole entire path is 100 meters 
And this part right here is x, so this, the displacement up here is, is x go 100. Final velocity, yeah, that's correct. Because delta s, that's change in, change in um, displacement, the displacement is equal to 100 minus x, which is the same as this equation right here, okay? All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay. Mm, now I'm going to write in red, okay? Um, I'm bringing it out a little bit. Okay. So, what are our variables? Okay, so what we don't know is just this change in times in our initial positions. Okay, so what equation can we use to find a change in time? Try this out. Um, change in velocity is equal to acceleration times time. See, let's see if we can use this. Change of velocity is equal to 0 minus 16. Our acceleration is equal to, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this. It is negative 3.2 um, meter per second square. And that's because it stands right here. The car, the car brakes with constant accelerations of 3.2 meter per second. Like the word, the word brakes right here is the hints. That means um, the car begins to slow down, okay? So our acceleration has to be negative. 3.2, I'm gonna neglect the units for now. And our delta t, that's just t minus t, okay? So, let's clean it up. I'll show you something really cool. So you see, when you um, kind of like reposition the thing, you get this. That, um, so basically you're trying to get this thing by itself. So you divide 16 by negative 3.2. So you get t minus t is equal to this thing. So I'm gonna calculate that, which is equal to negative five, okay? So when we clean it up, it's like this. Okay, so there we have um, we have for the this is for this right, and now we're gonna find this. We're gonna find x. Okay, um, clean that up. Okay, now we're gonna find x. So what equations can help us find x? The initial positions. How about we go for this one? So basically, um, I don't have a time. When you use this equation, that means you don't have a delta t. So, so I try to limit the amount of variables as much as possible. Okay, let's try this, okay? So, um, Basically, for this equation, you just square the velocity. So our initial velocity minus final final velocity minus initial velocity. Square everything. Okay, two. Our acceleration is equal to negative three point two, and delta s is equal to one hundred minus x. Okay. So here you have. Let me calculate that. That is negative 256 is equal to um, negative 6.4 100 minus x so I'm going to try to um, clean it as much as possible expand it out so multiply this by this and this by this so 640 minus plus 6.4x right um let me check yes that's correct okay so now you can solve for x right try to get x by itself x is equal to negative 2 5 6 plus 
six four zero. So you bring this over, and then you multiply the whole entire thing by this. Okay. Now you have sixty. So. Literally, you just found the answer for one thing. When you find one thing, you can find the rest very easily. See? You already know the um, amount of distance the first acceleration covers, which is 60 meters. Okay, so that's our X. Okay, now that we have X, you see this equation right here? You can use this to find T. So X is equal to 16T, 60, which is X, to 16T. So T is equal to 60 minus 16, which is divided by 16, sorry, which is 3.75 seconds. Right. So let's look at the question again because I did not go over the questions. Sorry, that's my dog. So you can read the question by yourself later. But so what the question asks is number one asks um, for x. So we already found x, which is sixty meters. And for number two, it asks for the total time. T, um, let's call it time, to, total time. I'm gonna write it out. So, so you found a small t, oh, now we have to find the total time. Remember this equation right here? T is equal to, um, t minus t is equal to negative five. So if you plus t, and t you get total time okay big t plus small t is equal to total time so t is equal to negative five or oh, positive five did anyone catch that sorry okay t is equal to positive five minus plus small t so what is a small t? See this? Yep, that's a small t. 5 plus 3.75 is equal to 8.75. So that's our answer to the second question, 8.75. So now we